Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Michael at Val5 Links posting this. So Bitcoin and cryptocurrency prices have soared following the premature publication of a US Treasury statement on a long awaited Biden administration executive order. So we are going to get to the leak. We are going to get to the Biden executive order. But first, I just wanted to mention that the crypto market has popped. Now, Michael says, and he's quoting the article, that uh, prices have soared. I mean, they have gone up a little bit here. Um, the market cap is actually uh, up about $100 billion, which uh, is quite significant if you think about it. Bitcoin dominance, we're still hovering at about 43,000. So Bitcoin was uh, that one cryptocurrency that saw a lot of action right now up over 8%. In the last 24 hours, Ethereum up 6.16. Uh, we got Binance coin up 2.37%. XRP is up 3.42 as of the time of this recording. Take a look at Luna though, up 20 0.58%. So Terra Luna, uh, the best performing crypto in the top 10, uh, at least as of the time of this recording, but you guys can see uh, other altcoins have also gained some steam um, because we are seeing Bitcoin rally. So let's just talk about this for a second. So leak reveals Biden's crypto plans, sending the price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Solana, Cardano, XRP, Terra's Luna, and Avalanche higher. The first part of this article just talks a little bit about uh, the price action. Uh, when I move down here, we get into the nuts and bolts. A presidential executive order on cryptocurrencies would support responsible innovation as it coordinates U.S. policy across agencies. I'm going to get to that in more detail, guys, in a sec. Uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen wrote in a statement that was briefly published on Tuesday evening before being removed, but not before being spotted. We're also going to get to that statement. The news calmed Bitcoin and crypto investor fears. I think this is the bigger point that we should be paying attention to. So fears have been quelled. They were fearing that the executive order uh, to be signed on Wednesday, which is today by U.S. President Joe Biden, according to the report earlier this week, would mean a broad crackdown on the red hot Bitcoin and crypto market. Uh, the order seems relatively benign, hence giving the market some clarity. Uh, this coming from Marcus Sotiru, an analyst at the UK-based digital asset broker Global Block, who wrote uh, in an emailed note, as many investors had prepared for the downside risks of this event by waiting on the sidelines, we are seeing many buy Bitcoin back in what appears to be a spot-driven rally. So that's what we're seeing now based on remarks. Crypto executive order is positive and calls for coordinated and comprehensive approach. Well, let's take a look at Bitcoin price for a second right now. So we are back up, guys, to $42,200 per BTC. You guys can see we are now back in that support resistance level, that significant level that we have seen multiple times over. Boom, here, resistance back in January of 2021. We have seen it almost hit up here, hit right there again back in August. Uh, resistance then formed support back here in October, September, October. Uh, and then we were seeing it uh, continue to hit in these regions in here. Finally, today we are now trying to get above it. So this again is formulating resistance as of today, March the 9th, 2022. XRP price also moving up, albeit not by much right now, trading at about 72.2, uh, or sorry, 75.2. So um, we are still formulating and it's uh, filling out quite nicely now, formulating this bullish pennant pattern, uh, which hopefully will result in a pop to the upside. Now, Bitcoin is primed and ready to go. I guess uh, now what we're looking for is more confirmation that bulls will be buying. If there is more news coming down the pipe that is positive for cryptocurrency in any way, shape or form, we could see that pile on. We could see more demand for Bitcoin, therefore more buying activity that would result in higher volume. So a volume spike and that would increase the price ultimately. Back to Bitcoin dominance for a second because I did talk about dominance a little bit. Um, so this is what we are seeing right now for Bitcoin dominance, guys. Just to put things into perspective, we uh, are not seeing that altcoin rally that we were expecting. We are continuing to see Bitcoin dominance move up, uh, similar to what we saw back in October and July. So altcoins compared to Bitcoin uh, still haven't seen their day in the sun, which means to me um, an altcoin rally, at least as of yet, is not going to be on the table. And uh, that just also uh, strengthens the argument for a higher Bitcoin price, in my opinion, that, um, you know, taking a look at this accumulation likely has completed. And so Bitcoin, hopefully, we'll see it retrace up to $69,000. And uh, from there, who knows 
how high we can go. Of course, uh, we got Bloodgood here on Twitter. People call for a 20k BTC, but let's put that into perspective. In not a single run, Bitcoin returned to a previous all-time high. So let's not forget that the previous all-time high was around $20,000 back in 2017. And um, what he's saying is we have never seen that in the past. So the all-time high before that was uh, down and around here, 1100 roughly, 1163. And um, Bitcoin did go down, but it went down to about 3100, 3200, give or take. So we never actually saw Bitcoin um, match that former all-time high. And the same happened in 2013 compared to 2011. So uh, Bitcoin never matched, never dipped down, retraced to its former all-time high. So essentially what that means is, chances are if history were to repeat itself that we will not go back down to $20,000. And also just real quick, if we are to consider that um, the all-time high price, let's say for sake of argument, this is our theory, all-time high price was $69,000, dollars and now we're just waiting for the downturn for Bitcoin. We also know that uh, markets have retraced 80 to 90%, uh, 85%, or let's just put it to 80% here. 80% would bring us to about $13,600, which certainly would be below $20,000 and therefore if we have not seen that well maybe it just won't happen let's keep going uh something unusual very unusual as per OSINT Defender here talking about the times we're living in Discord and Spotify began having issues about two hours ago but now almost all major U.S. online stores services and social media are experiencing heavy outages and or other issues this may be some kind of cyber attack so, I mean, full disclosure here, I did not uh, notice anything with uh, my personal services like my Netflix or what have you. I think this is just reported from uh, users calling in or emailing in reporting these issues. So uh, we have not had any official confirmation on anything. Looks as though most services besides Discord are beginning to return to normal. Uh, so this again from 16 hours ago. There may have been a Cloudflare issue that caused most of these services to begin having intermittent issues. So... Um, I don't know. Did anybody else have any issues with their Netflix, Zoom, Facebook, Twitter, so on and so forth? Uh, I, again, personally did not have any issues, but uh, this was reported here by OSINT Defender because, I mean, this is on a lot of our minds, especially if we're closely following what is going on over there at the World Economic Forum with the Great Reset. We know XRP and RippleNet set to be the center of a new financial system. This from the architect here, we are being primed for the collapse. It's inevitable. What comes after is the question. Get ready for an event that will change everything. Gas prices will be the least of your worries. But have no fear, guys, because it looks like in the United States, we are getting more crypto clarity. This from James K. Filan. So this has to do with the Biden executive order. For your information regarding the upcoming executive order, which is being signed today, Biden set to announce executive order reviewing cryptocurrencies. And so here are some points that I think are important. The White House is set to release an executive order this week, tasking several federal agencies with conducting a broad review of cryptocurrencies, including studying the creation of a U.S. currency, U.S. digital currency, according to a person familiar with the matter. The executive order, which the White House is expected to reveal in the coming days, will task the Treasury, Commerce, State and Justice Departments, among other agencies, with studying elements of the fast-growing cryptocurrency market. The agencies will have roughly three to six months to conduct a review and prepare a public report with recommendations for the federal government's approach to digital tokens. So it looks as though 2022 is going to be a very, very interesting year. Cryptocurrency is a name given to a broad group of digital assets. Okay, so this is just uh, defining what cryptocurrencies are. If you've been uh, sitting under a rock for the last 10 years, they talk a little bit about Bitcoin spiking in value, has been around for 13 years. Uh, just down here, the White House will ask the Treasury Department to study the creation of a U.S. digital currency, a possibility that the Federal Reserve has already stated to evaluate, while the Justice Department will be tasked with reviewing whether Congress would need to pass new legislation for a central bank digital currency. The person said the other will request the Office of Science and Technology Policy at the White House to look at the technical considerations of considering a U.S. digital currency. The White House executive order will also task the Treasury Department with reviewing the possible risks cryptocurrencies pose to broader financial stability, as well as the illicit finance and national securities risk that the tokens present, according to the person. Under the order, the Treasury Department will work with the SEC and Federal Trade Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission to analyze the risks they pose to consumers. 
The Biden administration will review the environmental impact of mining cryptocurrencies, a process of generating revenue by using energy-intensive supercomputers to involve complicated puzzles. So that's an interesting point here that would obviously uh, put a check mark in the columns of uh, environmentally friendly cryptocurrencies, XLM, XRP, uh, other ones like Solana, Algorand, so on and so forth. The administration will also look at how cryptocurrencies shape economic competitiveness, as well as how foreign allies approach digital assets, according to the person involved in making this statement. So a lot of very um, standard stuff, I guess I would say. Many investors, though, were worried that this would have an impact on uh, markets, that this would have an impact on uh, cryptocurrency investing. For U.S. investors as a whole, I think ultimately, um, you know, the president, uh, the government, the IRS, they just want you to pay your taxes. I mean, they're happy for you to trade cryptocurrencies similar to securities, to, um, you know, the stock market or what have you, anything else that uh, one can trade on an open free market. They just want it to be regulated. They do not want a quote unquote Wild West environment for this kind of thing. And so, um, you know, in the past, people have gotten away with trading cryptocurrencies and not paying their taxes. Well, they want to put a stop to this. And so, you know, a lot of information here that um, isn't terribly exciting, but, uh, you know, on the positive side here, uh, it's nothing that is going to necessarily squash innovation in the United States. We are still likely to see innovation come out of Silicon Valley. Uh, this is not uh, necessarily tamping down that part of it. So there's the investor side. They talk a little bit about uh, a digital currency, CBDCs. The U.S. is tasking all these organizations with, uh, you know, their uh, directive with regards to uh, crypto standards and uh, how they're going to regulate that. And Matt Corallo posting this. Looks like Yellen's comments on tomorrow's executive order were accidentally posted a day early and now they are removed. So if you go to the website home.treasury.gov, um, this is what you see right now. Access is denied. You are not authorized to access this page. However, in this link here, he does go to the web archive. And when you go to the Wayback Machine, you can find the statement here, statement by Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, on President Biden's executive order on digital assets. Uh, and it was uh, post dated to today's date, March 9th. And here's what it has to say. U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, released the following statement. President Biden's historic executive order calls for a coordinated and comprehensive approach to digital asset policy. This approach will support responsible innovation that could result in substantial benefits for the nation, consumers, and businesses. So right there in uh, one of the first sentences, we're talking about responsible innovation, uh, substantial benefits for the nation, for the US, consumers, and businesses. So very pro-American. We were very worried that this would uh, turn out to go the other way, that China or Russia could have the upper hand on the technology side of things, uh, but the U.S. clearly does not want this to happen. It will also address risks related to illicit finance, protecting consumers and investors, and preventing threats to the financial system and broader economy. Guys, it gets more interesting. Listen to this. Under the executive order, Treasury will partner with interagency colleagues to produce a report on the future of money and payment systems. So, this is perhaps where RippleNet and other uh, U.S. payment systems may come in. XLM, for example, uh, it goes on to say, we'll also convene with the Financial Stability Oversight Council to evaluate the potential financial stability risks of digital assets and assess whether appropriate safeguards are in place. And because the questions raised by the digital assets often have important cross-border dimensions, we'll work with our international partners to promote robust standards and a level playing field. Her words, not mine. This works to complement ongoing efforts by the Treasury. Already, the department has worked with the President's Working Group on financial markets, the FDIC, and the OCC to study one particular kind of digital asset, stablecoins, and to make recommendations. So, again, uh, some of the focus here on stablecoins. Clearly, uh, those in their mind have to be regulated if they are going to uh, come up with a CBDC, the U.S.'s own governmental um, retail CBDC, or however they're, they're seeing on utilizing that. Under the executive order, Treasury and interagency partners will build upon the recent published national risk assessment, which identified key illicit financial risks associated with digital assets. As we take on this important work, we'll be guided by consumer and investor protection groups, market participants, and other leading experts. Treasury will work to promote a fairer, more inclusive, and more efficient financial system while building on our ongoing work to counter illicit finance and prevent risks to financial stability and national 
security. So this all sounds good. This all sounds like, um, you know, exactly what we want to hear. Essentially, cross-border dimensions. The idea that, well, money moves cross-border. Transactions are not just happening within the nation. So there has to be a protocol put in place. I love that she mentions a level playing field. This is uh, one of those buzz terms that Brad Garlinghouse has mentioned throughout the years. RippleNet, for example, creates that level playing field for cross-border transactions. They do not want to stifle innovation, uh, which uh, was also uh, mentioned up here in the, the third paragraph paragraph, I believe, or third sentence. They want to support responsible innovation, exactly what Ripple is and has been doing for the last several years. Uh, and that would benefit the nation, customers and businesses, of course. Also, let's just go back to that Wall Street Journal article when uh, they talk about the environmental impact of mining cryptocurrencies. So clearly they're going to be scrutinizing the proof of work currencies like uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and likely they will favor cryptocurrencies that have less of a carbon footprint like XRP, like XLM, essentially the cryptocurrencies that solve problems. This all fits within the framework from the US Department of the Treasury guys. And so just to pull it all together, Bonkrypt XRP posting this cryptocurrencies to grow as a store of value. Now, this is coming out of Singapore. This is Ripple partner DBS Holdings. This is coming from Piyush Gupta, the CEO of DBS, which is a Ripple partner bank in Singapore. And here's what he has to say. Singapore-based DBS Holdings Group Limited Chief Executive Officer Piyush Gupta thinks that private digital coins like Bitcoin will continue to grow as a meaningful store of value. Now he's saying like Bitcoin, I'm going to expand on that and say no, the cryptocurrencies that solve problems. And now that we have the inside scoop, the statement from Janet Yellen uh, from yesterday, I think we can get a better sense of what that will mean. He goes on to say, nonetheless, it's unlikely that cryptocurrencies will take over the role of state-backed money. Uh, I also expect that regulators and politicians will be loath to give up control of the monetary policy and economic management tools and will therefore be very circumspect about letting private money grow. So um, the idea that, no, we cannot have private money. We still do need to um, hold on to control of the money of the day, which is the US greenback. If you are American and or if you do trade uh, around the world, having said this, I do think that private money or crypto will continue to grow as a meaningful store of value, much like gold is today. Let me go down here. The global bank's chief does not see privately issued digital money taking over the role of state back money. The reason for this is that money needs to have three attributes. Now listen to what these three attributes are guys, and we'll talk about it in a second. Be a unit of account, a medium of exchange, and a store of value. Privately issued coins find it hard to attain the first two of these. Okay, and then over here, as reasons include a lack of ubiquity, absence of faith in the issuer, and large volatility in value among others. But if we think about this for a second and we put it into perspective, focusing on XRP specifically, if it is to be central to a new and emerging financial system, it would certainly not lack ubiquity. There would also be faith-centered around said cryptocurrency and uh, well, the volatility, if it did indeed command a high enough price at that point in time, you know, once there is network utility and once buyers and sellers are happy to pay that said price for transactional value, that would be the last thing. XRP would be less volatile than other cryptocurrencies. And so to Gupta's point here, you know, maybe today we are not seeing that for cryptocurrencies like XRP or for the rest of the crypto market for that matter, but in a world, where this is going to change, where a new financial system is going to be put in place after a great reset, this, guys, this is what gets me really excited to know that I hold one of the greatest cryptocurrencies on planet Earth today. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Guys, I really want to hit 100,000 subscribers. If you find yourself watching the videos, you aren't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.